not feeling too good. <laughs> what in the hell are you? Hey, Bob. Okay, people, today let's take a quick look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends Wolverine 50th Anniversary Brood Wolverine and Lalandra. Lelandra. Lalandra? Yes, it's another X Men set. More steak and potatoes? Yes, please. But for this one, my feelings are opposite than they were for the Logan and Sabretooth two pack. Even there, I was looking forward to Logan more. And then Sabretooth came out of left field and was like, Rawr, hey, I'm awesome. Don't get me wrong, I like Brood Wolverine so much so that I already made a custom, but this two pack is all about Lalandra for me. And we've had her in some form before, but it was just a head that came with Mystique. It, it, finding the base body, I guess Silver Sable was suitable, but not perfect not like this that head's not terrible in fact i may use it for another shiar character of some kind but it's not photo real and if i can get an upgrade then i'll take an upgrade so that leaves us right here right now as far as the package goes, it's what we're seeing with the rest of the Wolverine 50th anniversary. It's a box, it's a window, it's toys, it's a background. Marvel Legends logo, Wolverine. Warning, choking hazard, small parts. Do not put the Princess Majestrix of the Shi'ari Empire or an alien infested mutant in your mouth. How many times do I have to tell you this? On the side, there's a modern rendition of that iconic cover along with the full size version on the back. And then down here's the original. Wolverine and Lalandra, Empress of the Shi'ari Empire face the parasitic brood aliens intent on consuming and destroying the X-Men. Naramani? Naramani? On the other side, it's, boy, this whole box is just about Wolverine, isn't it? Poor Lalandra. On the top, Wolverine, 50 years, Lalandra, Naramani. On the bottom, more warnings, legalese, barcode. Let's get this open. I forgot to push the record button. So here's the package. Here's the inner tray. Here's the background. This shows the inside panels from this issue. And really, as far as I remember, at least classic wise, this is the extent of Wolverine turning into the brood. He was infected on one page and then and then on the next page, it was healing factor kicking in, bub. So this was just a blink of an eye in the history of X-Men. I always wondered how an adamantium skeleton could do that though just transform into a tentacle. Also on the cover, the costume was morphing right along with the infestation, which we will get to here in a minute because I just noticed something. And we will get to that, but first there is a lot to like here. The torso, crotch, and legs are all reused from a previous brown Wolverine. And I did hit this with dull coat. The original sheen is peeking out right here and here, so it was a little shiny. For brood Wolverine, they brightened up the brown and then made the buckle silver. I've read a lot of X-Men, but I don't know if that was done for accuracy or something else. Either way, the silver does look good. It pops. It's still a good Wolverine body, and it's the cleanest, which is why they used it here. Updated Wolverines have things like this sculpted line at the shorts, whereas Brown doesn't. Needed that clean look for this rendition of Wolverine. Plus, it's 50th anniversary of Wolverine. They're making 50 Wolverines, so they've got to keep as many molds going as they can to get them all out. I'm not sure if the hands are reused, but man, are these claws improved. The older ones, the guards were sculpted onto the hands, and then the claws were plugged in on these new ones they're all together and man do they look so much better and I don't know if that's a factor in keeping the claws straight out of the package okay there is a little bend in the middle but man do those look good and then you can see the difference in the gap between the claws I think I like this side more but I'm not gonna complain about this side either. The arms are obviously new sculpt. One, pinless compared to the reuse pinned legs. And then of course the brood features. It just has that rough skin with the lines in it. Ooh, bleh. And it's the same when you get up to the head. Logan is infected with a brood embryo and it actually has a working jaw with a tongue inside. Bleh. The eyes, the veiny look working back, but then, yeah, that's the biggie, the brown on top. I think it's just a missed paint hit. Or maybe they did it on purpose because of how they interpreted that cover and some of the statues and some of the other appearances of Brood Wolverine. It just feels wrong. It just feels off. Because the art inside the comic clearly showed the lighter color, the traditional Wolverine colors up there. I will point out that I was getting kind of rough earlier with poses and the head popped off. And at the same time, the job popped out of place and I think it's just made like that. It doesn't look like I broke anything. It's just meant to pop up in there and 
once I get it there, it works fine. So uh, yeah, just watch out for that. Bringing the old one back again, you probably noticed that I did a little paint work on the skin tone here. That's to make this one my brood custom. This head came from Big Head Studio Customs on Instagram and there's a definite difference. I painted the custom head a darker brown and Hasbro went with a lighter gray color for the skin. So mine kind of matches the Marvel Select brood figure. <laughs> But that doesn't look too bad together. I hit that with some gray dry brush, match it up slightly. Yeah. For Lalandra, oh, look at this. This is way better than me having to customize under that other head they gave us. Yes, the silver is swirly twirly plastic. And I know some people don't like that. Me, I like it. It's comic booky. It gives it kind of a well, a swirl and a twirl. It makes it feel like metal, but also cartoony, comic booky, but without going that, you know what I mean. It's got an etherealness and the shiny silver just reflects the light beautifully. I have several lights in here and you can just see it off of here and here and all the high points and not obscuring details because you look close and there's some sculpt to it but that also stands out. It, it just works together nicely. Speaking of sculpt, I do believe this is mostly new. The arm may be reused from somebody that has a pinless double elbow because this is just an overlay. So that comes off, you got a plain arm. And then the legs have this sculpted armor top going down to a knee pad that is, wait, is that glued on top? No, that seems to be part of the knee. Then there's indents and lines running randomly through the armor right there and then around on the shin and even across the toes. The torso also has lines sculpted into it and at first I thought it was going to be paint or something but no that's they went the extra mile here. The belt's also sculpted on along with this raised edge of armor before it gets to bodysuit. Like I mentioned the bracers are an overlay with some nice armor sculpt on the outside. We get to the cape and I do remember that this is reused from the Hellfire Club Black Queen. But the rose has been replaced with an amulet of some kind. We get to the head and it's just iconic. Very Shi'ar type helmet, that bird-like look, aerodynamic, I guess. It has the lines sculpted into it too. And then the paints to the face looks amazing. The eyes peeking through just a bit of that tattoo work or whatever it is on the outside of her eyes. Again, the head that came with Mystique, not terrible. In fact, it's a more subdued look. And looking at it here, the paints aren't bad. It's just hard to go from here back to here. This does pop off. You got the dumbbell under there and the head ball actually fits into there. The silver doesn't quite match up, but if you prefer this helmet shape or this head size, there you go. It does fit on there. Going over articulation, there's a ball at the top of the neck with a hinge under that. Up and looks down and not a lot of tilt and then side to side. Articulation at the jaw. Butterfly joint goes forward, goes way back. Pin coming out to the shoulder, rotates all the way around and then hinges up to there. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow goes up to there. It's just too much muscle and sculpt. Swivel at the wrist with a hinge in and out. Hinge mid torso clicks down to there and then arcs back. Swivel at the waist hidden by the belt. I love that it slides down and gets over that. Ball coming out to the hip kicks way forward and then back and out. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee comes up. Oh, if you push really hard, bow. Swivel at the boot. Hinge at the ankle goes way back and then forward. Not a lot. Front facing pin for rocker. Lalandra, like I showed a minute ago, has a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck. It allows her to look up and down. Fantastic tilt. I love it. Vexman. Star jammers. Pin coming out to the shoulders rotates around to about right there. I forgot to mention that the cape is a bit stiff and gets in the way of the arms. The right's exposed. You can get out and do some action with that arm. The left is covered. You can bring it up and out, but it's limited. It's hindered. Hinge at the shoulder comes up to there. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow all the way up. Swivel at the wrist with the hinge in and out. Dumbbell at the mid torso. And again, because of the cape, it may be a little hard to get at, but crunches forward and then back and some tilt and some tilt and then rotation. Ball at the hip kicks forward and back and out. Beats Logan. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee. Oh! 
hinge at the ankle, back, forward, and then front facing pin for rocker. For accessories, Wolverine comes with two fists that have the guard sculpted on the back, but I will probably never use these. The tense hands that are on there just convey the pain that he's probably going through as the brood infects him. And since there's not a Wolverine head and those arms are like that, he's gonna... <laughs> Meanwhile, Lalandra comes with two grip hands, then there's a flat palm right hand and a fist left. I might use the fist every now and then, but for the right, she's gonna be holding her staff. This was another stumbling block when it came to customizing Lalandra before this with just the head. You didn't have her staff. Could have probably got it 3D printed, but it's also nice to get an official version. I will say the grip or the staff part of it being flat like this, it does make it awkward for her to hold it. You find that sweet spot, you have her hold it. She looks regal, done. There is La Lander. Another thing I forgot to talk about was that the cape does affect her standing a bit because it's something hanging off her back, but no heels. So she's fairly stable for the most part. Wolverine stands at about five and a half to the top of his head and then five and three quarter to the top of the ear wings. While Lalandra is about six inches to the top of her head and six and a quarter to the top of the helmet. If you have any of the other Marvel Legends Wolverines, you already know how he stands up to other legends. He's still Wolverine sized, obviously. And then Lalandra fits in with other female figures just as nice. Oh, Psylocke, maybe we're gonna get armored version of you out of this body. And then this just makes me want more star jammers. Same goes for more Imperial Guard. And I know it's a long shot, but maybe Xavier in his Warlord gear from X-Men number 275? Eh. But I'll also take Deathbird off the cover of that. So at the end of the day, I know y'all are real surprised, but I'm fairly happy with this. Well, okay, I do prefer my custom Brood Wolverine, but I can also look at them as two different versions of the same character. One is a little over the top, meant to pull you into the issue, make you read the comic, but then you you get inside and it's kind of, well, here it is, and it's over. <laughs> but again, the main draw is Lalandra. She's the new unique character for the Marvel Legends X-Men shelf. In fact, it's better than I pictured in my head when I was planning customs with the head that came with Mystique. So yeah, give me a death bird in swirly twirly pink and purple plastic to match this and I'm a happy boy. Not to mention the possibilities of the new sculpt involved here. It's been done to death. I've talked about it. Other people have have talked about it, but it seems like a lot of this can be reused for Armored Betsy or Armored Psylocke. And that's top of my wish list. In fact, that's the best Psylocke look ever. <laughs> boop, boop. So the more I think about it, the more Wolverine's going to become custom fodder or really just a head swap and a dry brush to make it work. But that's okay because that's how I hobby. That's how I collect. I like finding stuff that I can customize to make a little bit better, or I can swap parts and make something unique for my shelf. And then Lalandra is going to be up and center on. The, oh man, we have some of the Star Jammers. We have a couple of Imperial Guard. Uh, more, more, more. 